Welcome to Eastgate Church. I trust you'll find this message inspiring and encouraging for you today. I believe that this is a divine appointment and that's, that's not, you know, a rhetoric. I'm going to stay busy and I believe the Lord orchestrated this and I believe God is doing something here in this, in this land in UK. Can you say amen? I believe that you are here by divine appointment. I believe God's given me a word. and I, uh, uh, So I won't take the time to go into, you know, introductions and all that stuff. And all, all that you need to know is that the Lord is real and he's moving and the Holy Ghost is alive and well. I, wasn't, uh, I was raised, but my family wasn't. Um, and I, I try to, the churches that I, that I, that I do, um, and I travel uh, abroad a lot, but I just... I try not to get caught up, uh, let me just say it this way, I'm trying to encourage people not to get caught in religiosity or even in their own fundamentals. Just follow the Holy Spirit because if we ever needed the Holy Ghost, we need Him now. I don't know your uh, theology. I, I've met your pastor uh, a couple of times, talked to him, met him once, met him and talked to him a couple of times on the phone. I know that he loves the Lord. I don't know your uh, uh, feelings on eschatology, and, but I believe Jesus is returning soon. And I believe with all that, that means that we are under mandates and that we have never seen a time like we are living in. Uh, as you well know, uh, U.S. has gone crazy. Don't say it. Uh, so I know your elections this week, uh, but we just, we're in the middle of ours and it's just some real craziness. The worst thing that's going on with us is that many have forgotten God. And um, that's just an, a prime example of where we're at prophetically and biblically um, so I want to encourage you for the next like if you'll give me like 15 minutes to share this word and then we'll pray for some people I will tell you that the Lord is moving amazingly when I, when I tell you that, uh, what he's doing I promise you I promise you it's not for aggrandizement it's just to let you know and build your faith and let you know what God is doing I'm sure you have testimonies amen this has been a divine uh, uh, real move of the Lord uh, just supernatural and I'm going to talk about that just for about 10 to 15 minutes I want to encourage you today uh, just to listen to what the Lord has told me because even though I do this all the time and I've been since I was a very young boy 20 years ago oh you laughed at that didn't you yeah okay um, literally uh, my first revival I was 11 and um so, but in the last several years, all of us grow and all of us, the Lord teaches us. And I've been, um, I've been telling everybody, in fact, I shared this at the pastor's or the meet and greet thing, and I would be uh, remiss if I didn't. Can you all understand me with my southern accent? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I, I share this everywhere now because it's so uh, relevant to what I'm about to tell you because I, I repeat certain things everywhere because it's applicable to the whole world, what God is doing. Um, but he has been, um, been moving and speaking a very, a very de definitive word. And I'll, I'll tell you what I told them, and I share this almost every service, if you'll give me like one minute. I was being in, in music, I'm, I'm crazy over, I've driven this guy crazy about the sound this morning. And I promise tonight we won't have the roar and we'll get that fixed. Amen. Amen. Uh, and all of those we welcome, oh, I don't know if we're live or not, but I'm going to follow a disclaimer that he's not responsible for the contents of my material. <laughs> Man, you guys, please laugh. It's early in the morning. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I had worked with Bill Gaither for several years and been with record labels, like blah, 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 and written uh, a lot of songs. And I was in a church building by myself, and actually uh, it was a large building, but I was sitting about right where you're uh, at, sis. And... Um, Nobody was in the building with me. I'm just sitting there getting my mind on the service later on that evening. And the Holy Ghost says to me, look up at the speakers. I heard it definitively. I heard it plainly. So I look up at the speakers. And, of course, there was nobody at the, in the sound booth like this gentleman back there. I guess, well, you both are running sound. But anyway, and, uh, and if, if they would have started making a noise, I guess I'd have freaked out. But I looked up and... The Lord says to me, what do you hear? And I said, nothing. I mean, I heard him say this. 
And then just as an impression, the other was more of a voice, but as an impression, I heard him remind me that those speakers are powered by coaxial or cable. I don't think you'd use Bluetooth in a church, thank God. Man, guys laugh at that. That was supposed to mm, So, uh, and that's, they come from the, the amps and the board, and whether it's an MP3, CD, preacher, music, piano, drums, whatever's mic'd, they go through that to the speakers, and whatever is piped to them is what you hear. And the Lord plainly says to me, he says, you hear those? And I said, what do you hear? I said, nothing. And then he says to me, because those speakers have no voice of their own. They don't have a song. They don't have a prophecy. They don't have a sermon. They have nothing of their own, only what's transmitted to them. And he said to me, that's the way I want you and my speakers to be. You have no voice of your own. And I want you to give the people what I tell you to give them when I tell you to give it to them. And that's what I want to do here today just for about 10 or 15 minutes. And um, Are you saying praise God because I said 10 or 15 minutes? <laughs> if you can give me just a hair, just because I've got a lot of speaking to come in, I'll back up. So the Lord has given me an interesting word here today. And it seems really simplistic, but... I know that I heard it from him. Everybody say amen. amen. And I, uh, I'm going to give you this word. Everybody say amen. amen. I will tell you, nobody freak out. Can I say freak out? Is that all right over here? Okay. I don't know. Uh, I, um, I will tell you that the Lord has been moving supernaturally. And that he reminds me. As I said a while ago, that the atmosphere contains really what's going on, not what you see. What you see is not really what's going on. What's going on in the atmosphere affects what you see before it ever comes to the natural. It starts in the supernatural. Everybody say amen. amen. That means that there's angels in this house today. That means Jesus is in this house today. Uh, and several services over the last... A uh, year, I mean, it's been really cool because I'll be in one part of the world. Literally, I was in, in, in Tennessee. That's in the United States. And then I flew to Barbados five days later. That's in the Caribbean, right? And literally, somebody came up to me in Tennessee and said, they, just, they sent me a note and described two angels on the stage with me. Five days later, I flew to Barbados, and there was several thousand. God was moving as a miracle service. And five days later, somebody comes up to me and says, are you aware that there were two angels on the stage with you? And then just a few, uh, about a month and a half ago, and this, I'm going to lose a few of you here, but don't, don't run out yet. I'm in Cayman, and I, I have an office there. I do a lot in the Caribbean. And, and when one, uh, it was a, a special service that wasn't even planned. And one thing uh, I'll tell you, but I won't, I'll, I'll mention that tonight. But anyway, I'm preaching. I had to have an interpreter because there were several languages there, and uh, they made it a multi uh, cult, a culture, and diverse churches came together. And in the middle of the service, an angel appears with a huge vase of oil, clay jar that was seen, and begins to pour out oil on the service, and people were healed and delivered and set free. I, I was there. About a few days later, I'm in... Tennessee again and the Lord told me to have them lay their hands on the walls to pray for the community and as we pray I promise you I ain't making this up oil begin to pour out of the walls and drip down the floor I'm just going to tell you that you're about to see more of the glory of God than you have ever seen before amen, amen. so I want to tell you don't get trapped in how you were raised don't get trapped in religion where you say, well, I don't believe in all that. You have to be open to what the Holy Ghost is doing in these days. Everybody say amen. amen. So now if you'll give me about 10 minutes. That was a long five minutes, I know. <laughs> I'm trying, folks, to hurry. If you have your Bibles, real quick, let me start out with this. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 
And then I'm going to give you this word of the Lord, but I want, I want to uh, preface everything with this. And I, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom or my doctorate degree or singing and all that. I came to you declaring the testimony of God. Everybody say the testimony of God. I mean, when we consider Paul, if he, if he said that, who in the heck do we think we are? I said heck, everybody. For, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Everybody say amen. amen. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling that my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but they, they were in demonstration of the spirit and power of God. Everybody say power of God. This is the reason that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Read everybody that out loud with me. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He goes on down to say this. He says that we speak the wisdom not of men, but the wisdom which is from heaven. Then he goes on down to say that eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for him. Everybody say amen. amen. Now that's almost, uh, 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 that almost seems like a, uh, 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 an oxymoron because he says, wait a minute, your eye hasn't seen, your ear hasn't heard, and your heart doesn't know. It's because everything you get from God, first of all, comes through your spirit man. He said that, uh, but they are revealed unto us by his spirit. So today, I don't want you to process with how smart you are. I know there's some smart people here. I can see it. Well, two or three. And as intelligent as you are, if you're not careful what the modern church has done, is they try to process God through their own intellect rather than the presence of God. Because when you hear from God, your, your natural man will literally, and I'm, I'm making a point here, stay with me because I'm not going to take long today. But I'm telling you, your natural man uh, uh, will rebel against what God tells you because what God tells you is so magnanimous, so huge that your natural reasoning will resist because your natural man cannot process that this is going to happen to me. Because we're all taught to follow our senses. Those of us that listen as a kid. Some of our parents said you don't have any common but when it comes to the things of God, you cannot afford to process what God tells you by your common sense. You will miss what God is doing. While you're seated here right now, the Bible says that we are seated with him in heavenly places. Your body is here, but your spirit man is in Christ. That's why your spirit sometimes jumps and leaps at things that you don't even process. You don't even know why, but you feel like raising your hands and praising God even when you can't see why because God is dealing with your spirit. Everybody say amen. So today, I don't want you to process what God told me to tell you through your natural man. Because what we do is we've listened to so much junk our whole life. We have been trained to listen to our senses when God says, wait a minute. What I have for my people is so great and so wonderful and so powerful that your human reasoning cannot comprehend what I'm, I'm telling you. Some of you are about to get a divine miracle. Your families are going to be changed. I don't know if y'all preach quiet or loud here. I tried preaching quiet. I can't. <laughs> so just bear with me, all right? Your natural man cannot comprehend 
what God is about to do. Two things I want to tell you, and I'm just going to, I'm going to be very brief here today and pray. I want to tell you, first of all, all through the scriptures, anytime God got ready to give a miracle, the natural person always resisted. Example, I, this true story. How many of you believe in Abraham and Sarah? I was preaching on Abraham and Sarah here a while back. I'm not making this up. I saw older couples scoot away from each other. I'm not, I'm not prophesying, but here's Sarah in the house, and Abraham is visited by angels. She overhears. Now, he's an old man. She knows he's an old man. Everybody say amen. amen. She's with him every day. She sees him in the tent. When she hears the angels say, you're going to be a papa and, I, and she's going to be a, a mom, then she begins to do the natural thing. Just like some of you women would laugh if your husband said, we're going to have another baby. <laughs> Somebody say amen. It's because the natural is used to the natural escalation of life. The body grows older. The reproductive organs dry up. Things change. Things, things change. Everybody say amen. amen. So you process through the natural man what has changed. But I'm telling you, if God says you're going to have a baby, you might as well go on down to the store, get yourself a crib, paint that room, get the diapers because God not lie. Some of you are about to get a miracle in these days because God said it. We got a store in the States called Babies R Us. So go get your crib. Get your diapers. I'm telling you that what you're about to receive from God in these last days and the miraculous is going to take you stretching out and saying, wait a minute, I, I feel like preaching right now. I know it doesn't make sense, but God told me I'm about to have a miracle, so I don't want anybody telling me different. I want my miracle. Yes. Are we on camera? This is my best side. So, so I'm telling you today that God is going to send a wave of his spirit like we have never seen before. The other day I'm preaching and the Lord says to me this. And I, I didn't put this down until a while ago. And I'm, I'm going to have to skip 90% of my notes and just tell you what the Lord said. The Lord says to me, remember, uh, and I don't know, I, I don't want to get in, into geographical and generational curses today. I haven't got time. But the, the enemy, first of all, he's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. If he's in one place, he's not in the other. He, but he sends out monitoring spirits to do his bidding. You've got to remember, all he does is mimic what he saw in heaven. So he operates his kingdom without the power, but he operates it like the kingdom of God. So I'm doing a live post, and the Lord says, I, I, I heard this by the Holy Ghost. He said, you tell them that the enemy sent out monitoring spirits to see how they were reacting to the adversity that I put their way. But the, the Lord said, but the enemy and the demons have run back to Lucifer screaming and saying, wait a minute, instead of giving up their praising, instead of jumping, giving, they're rejoicing. They are not giving up. I'm telling you, God's about to do things you've never seen before. The lie of the enemy, and then the Lord said, he said, I, I ain't got time for all of them, but one thing a generational curse is, we use the word curse, it might be something, I ain't got time to go on this, but what the enemy does is he, he, he's had the, uh, the wherewithal to be around a long time. Amen. He knows what works on humans. Some of you, he visited your families generations ago with particular sins and adversity. And what he does is he comes back to try to see if it will still work in your lineage. 
the, the person that backslides, now this is what the Lord said to me, and I'm preaching one day. The Lord said to me, the, the, the person that backslides doesn't just give up immediately. It is a, usually a strategic plan of the enemy. A little bit here, a little bit there. He's a schemer and a plotter. Some of the things your family is facing today, he planned a long time ago. But the Lord said, tell them, you listen to me. He said, tell them that in one minute, I'm going to reverse what it took the devil generations to do. If you get nothing else out of this, Jesus said, I want you to go there. I promise you I heard him. I've been up almost all night. He said, tell them that no matter what has come, that I am still the Lord of all, that I am still the king of glory, and I'm about to send deliverance. Somebody ought to shout right now. Come on, praise him, everybody. Praise him, everybody. You are about to see divine a reversal of what the enemy has tried on your family. Somebody say, I know that just sounds good. No, it's more than a feel-good message. I'm telling you, he told me to tell you that he is still Lord of all, that every devil is still subject to him, that every disease is still subject to him. He is still king of glory. You ought to shout today. Shout. <laughs> what he has tried to do, that's why Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find shouting, dancing, singing? No. Will he find faith? Because the enemy has attacked the modern church's faith. Is Jesus really Lord? Is he still king? Can he heal my body? Let me just tell you in the last couple of minutes, I'm just telling you that I don't know what you're going through today. But regardless of what you're facing today, there is no sickness. And let's just get something straight right now. Everybody smile at me. Please, <laughs> if you're sick here today, Jesus wants to heal you. Amen. Amen. I was in a meeting the other day, and I'm not making this up. The Lord says to me, and I heard what I heard a while ago, and then the Lord also said, I want you to pray for somebody's kidneys. I don't know who that is today, but the Lord said to me, pray for feet. Feet. Well, how do you say it? Feet. <laughs> feet. 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 Toes, ankles, feet. Things in the shoes. He says it to me four times. And I'm thinking that's not very fancy. That's not a great miracle. Like I was in a service through a story here a while back with Tony Evans. And the second week, a blind lady gets healed. Been blind for years. She wakes up the next morning. I interviewed her for Facebook. I'll never forget this. She, I was interviewing and she said, I've, I've been blind and I just saw her family here a while back. She's still healed. Glory to God. The revival went on six weeks. And I said, ma'am, are you? And she, I said, give us your story. And then she says this. She said, I just knew you were good looking. <laughs> I knew she was healed. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny, everybody. But I was in the service, so the Lord says, pray for feet. And I, four times he says it to me. And I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, feet aren't very fancy. It may not be a big thing to you, but if somebody has a foot problem, it's a big thing to them. So I begin to just pray for feet, and the lady stops me as I'm walking down the aisle. She says, you don't know that I've had cysts and tumors all over my feet, but while you were praying, I watched them dissolve. I'm telling you today that Jesus told me to come there and tell them simply, he is Lord. You ought to shout to him right now, because God's a about to reverse the enemy wants to place hopelessness in your life and he wants to fill your faith with what everybody I, I shouldn't be telling this because we're online I have a, I, I came from a big family seven of us uh, there's three two boys on either side and then there's four girls I'm the exact middle of the middle now you know what's wrong <laughs> so I have a sister I love you if you're watching her name is You'll never meet her, maybe. Her name is Peggy. Peggy's my oldest sister. Beautiful woman. Just If you're watching, you're gorgeous. So, But every time she calls me, I get depressed. I mean, I've been praying in the Holy Ghost. I've been seeing God move. And by the time she calls me, I'm like, just. Uh, anybody have anybody like that? 
If you don't, the devil will send somebody your way. You've been believing God, and they'll pump you full of doubt. What you need to do is lose a few numbers and say, wait a minute. I don't want somebody to tell me I'm going to die. I want you to tell me how to live. I want you to tell me God can save my family. God can heal my body. So I'm preaching, and I talk about her. I said, I got a sister that depresses me all the time. I can't hardly stand to answer the phone. I know what's coming. <laughs> so she called me. This true story. She called me the other day and says, she don't call me Dr. Dennis. Dennis, why are you preaching about me? I, I said, what are you talking about? She said, I watched your service in the Caribbean. It was online, and you're talking about me. I said, I love you. <laughs> so I'm making the point is everybody has people. I read a, a well-known evangelist said when he was sick, four pastors came to him. Four pastors came to him and said he was really, really bad. We want you to know, one of them said this, we want you to know we're going to give you a good funeral. We're going to take care of your children. I'm not here to tell you. I know people die. I know we've all had adversity. But I'm telling you, God's about to raise our faith to another level. We're about to see things we have never seen before. If you can believe God, you're about to get a miracle for your family. Everybody say amen. Amen. Two minutes. I went to a church. Anybody ever been to a dead service? I preached a few of them. This service was so dead in Ocala, Florida, I could have phoned it in. <laughs> it, was, it was dead. Everybody say, Jesus is, Lord. Jesus is Lord. Say, God wants to give me a miracle. <laughs> so, the, I mean, it was, it was dead. I hadn't been there many years now. I know why. <laughs> you all see this laugh when you do. So listen, when, and then all of a sudden the Lord had given me a prophetic word that I wrote down because sometimes he's been telling me things before I ever get to the service. And the Lord said, you tell them this. And I felt like sharing this. He said, you tell them that as Moses heard my voice out of the fire, so shall your sons and daughters hear my voice. I don't care what they're in. I don't care how bad it looks because I'm not going to go by what I see with my natural eye. I'm going to embrace that Jesus is Lord over my body, over my family, over my country, over my finances. He is Lord. Amen. Don't gauge your miracle by something you went through before because you moved from glory to glory. Amen. So when I told them that People begin to be slain in the spirit. Y'all believe that here? <laughs> Delivered. I mean, just healed all across the building. And then the Holy Ghost says this. And I, I'm getting ready to, 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 to read one more scripture and close. The Lord says, tell them. Tell them that, that Moses heard my voice return back. And I used him for my glory. That he came out of his wilderness. Amen. As I told them that, I mean, people just, they, they just, like, whew. I feel it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Just, just came in the house. Came in the house. And then the Lord said, I want you to prophesy. And I begin to speak to the north. I don't know what the directions are here. The north, the south, the east, and the west. North. And then that would make that the... At least that's the same. <laughs> you don't, don't, although the sun don't gun down at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> Pull the shades. I love it here. No, I'm just. So, so as I said, that it just, it just broke. God delivered, healed their spirit. Just, just, just accepted it. And God just, whew, you ever been in a service? God just breathes. We went and had a supper, a lunch, in the next, the next door at their dinner, at their cafeteria or their dinner hall, whatever you all call it here, cafeteria, whatever. And the, the, the piano player and his wife came over weeping. Just weeping. And they said, can we talk to you? This is an hour later. I said, yeah, sure. Is it okay, Pastor Sullivan? Absolutely. Sullivan. He might be from this area. See, I'm trying to forget it. <laughs> so he said, sure, what's going on? And I said, what's going on? They said, our daughter just called us. This was an hour later. And said, Mama, 
from West Virginia. What were you doing an hour ago? Were you praying for me? She said, I heard Jesus say, come home. Since then, five of her children have returned home. Five of her children have now surrendered to God. The enemy wants to say that it's hopeless, that we live in a modern age and we're just struggling through till Jesus comes. I know that this world, I'm going to talk about it tonight. I know that this world is getting worse and worse, but I'm telling you that the revival and the glory that God is going to show his people will be greater than any generation has ever seen before. If you can believe God, Jesus is Lord. Everybody praise him right now. Praise him right now. A pastor, a friend of mine calls me and takes me out to dinner in, in, in Texas and says, I want to tell you what happened to a friend of mine. And I said, absolutely. And I'm closing with this. He said, um, everybody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Let me tell you something. Quit equating difficulty with your situation with something else. God can heal cancer like he can a headache. We're going to come against dementia and Alzheimer's here tonight, today. In fact, I'll tell you that in a second as we close and, and pray for you. He says, I've got to tell you what happened to a friend of mine. I'm writing, this, I'm writing a book on it. I said, tell me, Pastor Charles Flowers. If you may have, some of you may have heard him. And God's using him in the kingdom. And uh, San Antonio, Texas. He says, a friend of mine was in a service and he said, I flew down and met everybody because I'm writing it in a book. And I said, okay. The pastor's in the green room because sometimes, you know, I, I love shaking hands with everybody that I can. I, but there's a few times that I feel the anointing so strong I just got to be by myself. You understand that. And there's some people I don't want to talk to before I preach. <laughs> but nobody here like that. So the pastor's in the green room. And there's a couple thousand in this service. And the man, they're worshiping. I mean, there's, they're... Ever praise to our God or something. I mean, they're, they're on their feet. A lady right where you're at, Pastor, has a heart. And, he's, and I'm already weeping because he, he flew down and met all these people. And, and, and the pastor is a good friend of his. And she falls dead right there, has a heart attack and dies. And he's in the green room. And several nurses rushed up, tried to resuscitate her. Because you can imagine how that would affect a service. But they continue to worship. One of them says, let's go get the pastor. And they work on her for about 30 minutes. They said, no, let's, 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 he'll come out in any, any second. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Get ready just to come and play that pad in just a second. And, oh, I feel Jesus. Nothing happened. She's, and I'm not trying to be morbid. If you've ever seen that happen, she, she, she's dead. She's already. The pastor comes out, he told me. And he gets right here. I really felt like sharing this. He gets right here. One of the nurses gets up and runs to him. And says, because of the challenge, the enemy wants us to think like normal people. We are not normal people. Do you understand that we're under covenant with God, Jehovah? You are not called to be defeated by the enemy. Jesus is Lord. I wish I had the time to tell you some of the miracles that God has. Everybody say, Jesus is Lord. I don't care where your children are at, what they're doing, what's going on in your body. Jesus is Lord. If you're in here today and you don't know God, how deep in sin, Jesus is Lord. He's already broke the back of Satan. Jesus is Lord. Somebody shout amen. amen. Say this with me. I'm going to get my miracle. So, runs to the pastor and says, this has been almost 45 minutes now, and says, Pastor, I'm so sorry. It's too late. She's already, she gets the debt out, but not the ed. De he takes his big hand and doesn't slap her like that, but slap. Because he says, woman, don't you mess with my faith. 
Some of you have listened to your family and the world so long that the enemy says you just got to have it. I'm telling you, God is telling somebody today, I am here to give you a miracle. I am your Lord. Above me there is no other. If you wonder why we dance, we dance because Jesus is Lord. We shout because Jesus is Lord. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So he walks over to her, and he didn't mean to be rude to the lady, but he just didn't want her unbelief. Some of you need to change a few numbers. Find, I would rather hear from some precious woman that's been in her closet with God then the greatest theologian in the world says, well, you just have to have it. I want to hear from somebody that believes Jesus is Lord over my situation. I'm declaring by the word of God, I promise you, he told me to tell you all today, he is Lord. You ought to shout to him right now. I tell me just, begin just to play that, just that what I told you. Listen, so he looks at her. Now the church gets quiet and he says, church, I want everybody in this building to declare life. So all the church says, Amen. And then they all said life. Everybody say it. Life. Say it again. Life. Say it again. Life. For 30 minutes he said, I want you to declare Because we don't speak as somebody that's hopeless. We speak out of our spirit, man. I know what my eyes see. I know what the doctor said. I know what the banker said. But Jesus is Lord. I know what the devil says. Jesus is Lord. So after about 30 minutes, they all declaring life together. Everybody say life. Then he looks at the woman and says, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of death. Did you know why some of you have a target on your back? Because the enemy knows that you're about to do things for God you have never done. And he's, he literally is frantic about what the world, what the world, what the church is about to do in the world. And although he doesn't know the plan of God, he would never crucify Jesus. He can see if you had the propensity like Daniel and Shadrach because he studies your worship and your giving and your devotion and he monitors your praise. And whenever he hears things come out of your mouth that are a threat to him, then he puts a bullseye on you. But I'm telling you today that God's about to do a divine reversal in your life. Your children are coming home. Your bodies are going to be healed. Somebody praise him right now. You have not seen yet what God's about to do. So then he says, in the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of death and in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. By the way, Jesus said, I give unto you all power or authority. You all know the first word power there means authority. If you see a hundred pound policeman out stopping traffic, you know why that big truck stops? Not because he's bigger uh, uh, that he's not bigger than the the policeman but because the policeman's authority is bigger than his power yeah 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 so he says in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come back to life she sits up she sits up Stands up and then she testifies later. She says, my precious saints, I was already in heaven going to Jesus. I saw him. I was walking toward him. And Jesus stopped me and said, you cannot come any farther. And she says, why, Lord? He said, because my people are calling you back to life. Today we're going to pray. We're going to bind the enemy. We're going to declare every spirit, I I just know, every spirit of oppression generationally or that might have tried to come on you. I bind it now in the name of Jesus. Everybody just raise a hand. I feel the Holy Ghost even now. 
Leba, over up just a hair. Volume up just a hair. Come on, everybody, just worship just for a second. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Everybody worship just for one minute. I bind. If you're here today, I know I'm talking to somebody. I know by the Holy Ghost. You have been literally haunted by oppression and depression. Nobody's looking around. Who is that? I want you to raise your hand. Somebody. Literally. God bless that one. Literally. Literally. God bless that one. I'm going to pray for you. In Jesus' name, I come against the spirit of oppression. I bind that in the name of Jesus that tries to steal your joy. You take one step forward and two steps back. I bind it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I bind it now, a prostate problem. I bind in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I speak healing all across this place. Now, Father God, everybody worshiping the Holy Ghost right now for one minute before pastor comes, we're going to pray. I declare that Jesus is Lord over the influencing spirit on your children and your grandchildren. The first thing the Lord just told me right now, I, I promise you this is what I heard. He said, I want you to pray for their children and their grandchildren. If you're here and you have families that need God, I want you to stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for your children right now. Thanks for watching. If you've been challenged today, then please drop a message so that we can help support and pray for you. And also, remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next message.